honors God. And today you're here to honor God. And so that's what we want to do. So please, uh, on your bulletin, uh, there's, there's one thing there that says that if you're thankful for that, you have to fill it in. But maybe there are other things you can think of as you go through this time and as we do our, our thanksgiving to God. So this morning, we're talking about thankful people. 1 Kings 17. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. 1 Kings 17, verse 2. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in Kiriath Ravine, east of Jordan, and you will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to Kirith Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him food, bread, and meat in the, in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Verse 7. Sometime later the brook dried up, because there would have been no rain in that land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zareth, the region of Sidon, and stay there. And I have directed the widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zareth. Where he came to the town gate. A widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? And as she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar, and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home, and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Verse 13, Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me, and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up, and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the, on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse, and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, What do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, have you brought tragedy even to the widow I am staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched out on the, on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. And the Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. Thankful people. I think that's something that we all need to strive for in our lives, because oftentimes our lives are not that smooth and uneventful. There are things that happen in our lives, and yet we can be thankful even in those times. Uh, thinking of uh, Rachel Green. Here in Abbotsford, I read in the paper, it says, If not for the service quick thinking and first aid training, Rachel, Rachel Bryan isn't sure whether she'd still be alive today. She was out for dinner on Tuesday night at Ricky's Restaurant on Marshall Road with her 20-year-old son. She ordered breakfast for dinner, eggs, bacon, and toast. Halfway through her meal, Brain told, took a bite of toast and began to choke. I couldn't breathe, she said. It was so scary. Her son reflected her look at panic and yelled for help. Yeah. Feeling she was about to pass out, Breen stood up out of her booth, hoping to attract more attention. The next thing Breen knew, her server, Jordan Kettering Oliver, came to up behind her. He told her that he knew first aid and asked if she could cough it out. She couldn't. He pounded her back, but she kept choking. He then wrapped his arms around Breen, just below her rib cage, and performed the Highland Maneuver. That got the food to pop out, she called. Kettering Oliver sat down next to her in the booth, helping her calm down from the crisis. As she finished the rest of her meal, he checked in on her repeatedly to see how Breen was doing. The next day, she came back to give him a thank you card, and she could tell that he really didn't want any more thank yous because she had thanked him four or five times already. 
and he simply said, you're welcome. Turning to the cashier, Breen said, wow, that's a pretty amazing server. The cashier said, well, you're not the first. Within the la this last year, he's helped two people who have been choking and possibly could have died, but he helped them through that process. She was truly thankful. Some quotes on thankfulness this Thanksgiving. Lucy <coughs> Maud Montgomery. I am so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. Thomas Goodwin says, those blessings are sweetest that are won with prayer and worn with thanks. Jeff Dixon says, sometimes we focus so much on what we don't have that we fail to see and appreciate and use what we do have. H.A. Ironside, we would worry less if we pray, praised more. Thanksgiving is the enemy of discontent and dissatisfaction. Todd Stalker, thankfulness creates gratitude, which generates contentment, which causes peace. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, we pray for the big things and forget to say thanks for the ordinary small and yet not really small gifts. This Thanksgiving weekend, are you truly thankful? Are you thankful for all the things in your life? Let me take you to two more people in the Old Testament who I believe were thankful, and that's Elijah and the widow with her son. Elijah, by the way, means the Lord is God. Now the background of this time was that they're in the reign of the Ahab the king. The nation had lacked a prophet to address the house of Omri, which was wicked. Now a prophet bursts on the scene with a vengeance. He needs to confront the prophets of Baal. So first, God discredits Baal, who is known as the God of the rain. So in verse 1, he says, Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except by my word. God already was establishing himself as the ultimate supreme power, and through Elijah, he was beginning to do that. So I believe there are five things that Elijah was thankful for as I think about that, and I think you can reflect upon that too. And as you go through each of the points, I'd like you to be able to think about when God has done these things in your life so that we can have just a rousing, unbelievable sharing time if we don't get the music back. So let's do the first thing. God's protection, verses two and three. I'm sorry? We're good? Okay, we'll do it at the end. God's protection. Verses 2 to 3. I'm on a roll. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook I have directed, and the ravens will supply you with food. The first thing we see here is that God's protection was upon Elijah. Elijah knew that after he gave the news to King Ahab that there would be no rain, that he would be just a tad upset. That the control of the king was no longer in his hands. It was truly in God's. And we see here that God protects us over the years. You may have think of times in your life when all of a sudden you're driving and that car just barely misses you. And you think, whoa, that was so close. And yet God protected you. He watched over you. There were a couple times that I can think of with Del and I and we were just we were cruising down the one of the streets in here in Abbotsford and a car came through the intersection and I jammed on my brakes and it just I inches. And a big truck just went past. And I thought, whoa, where did he come from? I have the green light. And someone just was not paying attention. God's protection. Uh, David says in Psalm 46, 1, He is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. 46, 7 of David, the Psalms, The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. And then Paul, Romans 8, 38. If God is for us, who can be against us? I don't know if I've ever shared this illustration, but this one sticks out on my mind the most of God's protection. Sometimes as pastors, we don't really know where we're going, but God just continues to direct us. One time, when I was in my last church, uh, I was called by uh, somebody who I didn't know. They lived in Surrey, and uh, it was just over the line from Langley. And so I, they said that someone had died, and they wanted a pastor. And I think they just put their finger in the phone book when they had phone books and basically picked my name out. So I went there. I drove up. It was like a really run-down house. I thought, whoa, I wonder who lives here. This is, nobody's cut the grass for years. The house looks like it's fallen down. I knock on the door, and the door opens, and there's this gigantic guy. He's got a beard down to here. I'm thinking, he might be a biker. Yeah, I think he is. And I looked around, and sure enough, there were bikes moving all over the, the yard. 
And he says, what do you want? And I said, well, I'm Pastor Jim. Oh, Pastor Jim, come on in. And he grabs my arm and he pulls me into the place. So he takes me downstairs and thinks, oh, it's over now. Oh, I didn't even get a chance to see my Nutella. And as I'm walking down, there's about 15 biker guys all in a circle. And they're all crying their heads off. I've never seen a biker guy cry, cry before. I never want to see it again. So we go in, and this guy says, if this is the pastor, I think he called me the Padre. This is the Padre. I said, whoa, uh, hi guys. And they all came up, and they began shaking my hand, and, and they sat me down, and I'm in the middle of these guys, and they're all, the beards are like down here, and, and they're all dressed in leather, and I thought, whoa, oh Lord, what's going on? And they, they said, our friend died in a motorcycle accident. And I said, oh, that's too bad. And we began to talk about funeral arrangements. And then all of a sudden, the door bursts open, and there's two guys that come in, and everybody gets up, and I'm like sitting still, and everybody's like jumping up, and they all go towards these guys, and one guy goes head to head with this guy, and they start talking to each other, and, and so, you know, what's the appropriate response of the pastor? Step in front of them. Like, right in between them. So, okay, guys. And they're all taller than me, and I can't see through their beards, but I finally <laughs> pushed their beards aside, and I pushed them back, and, and the one guy, who was the new guy, he looks at me, and I look at him, and I go, oh boy, I'm a trouble. And again, nothing happened. So then we finally settled down the situation. He sat down. They all sat down. It seemed like this guy was part of the same group. I'll call him a group. And uh, <laughs> as we were talking later, he said, he says, you know, pastor or padre, I can't remember what he called me. He says, when you broke up our little conversation there, I was going to punch you out. He said, but something stopped me. That's when I knew I got a new guardian angel. That my present guardian angel went straight to the throne of grace. He said, he threw himself on God's mercy and said, please, I will protect anyone else but Pastor Jim. So can I have a transfer? Now? And I don't know if he got it or not, but um, I felt really sorry for my guardian angel at that moment. But God's protection upon me. And, and there must be times in your lives when you've been in a situation where God just stepped in and it was his protection. So maybe you want to share that today. <coughs> Number two, God's guidance, three and four. You will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to supply you for food there. The second thing you see here is that God's guidance. He, he told them exactly where to go. That, that's our God. He, he knows exactly everything, and he knows where we can go because he knew this is a place that could be out of the reach of Ahab the king. Now, how do you know sometimes when God's guidance? And, and this is always interesting, too. And I look back and I say, God, how would you know? And yet I remember that God is the God of all gods. He is supreme and he knows all things. And there are times in my life when I have gotten special words from God and I just simply knew. And there are times I think that God guides us through different ways. For instance, the first way that God may have guided you in the past was a dream. Now, I don't get dreams like this, but Nellie does sometimes. And some of the, when she has these dreams, they actually come true, which is very, very cool. I kind of wish I had that. But you think of Joseph. The angel came to Joseph and said, take Mary, go to Egypt. That's safe. I like the way that God guided Gideon. When uh, Gideon was told to go to war, he wasn't sure. So he, he said, okay, Gideon, sneak out at night and go over to the opposing guys and listen to what I'm going to tell one of them. So he goes over, he sneaks over, and he's listening. And one guy says to another guy from the enemy, the Amalekites, he says, I had this really crazy dream last night. I must have had pizza or something. I don't know what to do. It's like, I dreamed that the Israelites were going to come down, and they were just going to wipe us out. And Gideon goes, wow, that's cool. And he goes back and he tells his troops, the victory is ours. So dreams is sometimes how God does it. Then there's visions. There's the Apostle Paul. He got the vision uh, in Acts 69. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man from Macedonia and prayed, and he prayed, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. So God gave him a vision as to how he was going to guide him. And I think we can be thankful this Thanksgiving for God's guidance. You think of how you got here and how God has guided you to this place. Along your life's journey, how God has guided you. And through that process, his hand has been upon you. That's something to be thankful for. The third thing I think he could be thankful for was his provision. Verse 6. Uh, this is so cool. 
The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Now wouldn't that be cool if you got served in bed, or wherever he was, by ravens? Now, I have two blue jays that are, uh, always come to my back porch, and they come on my railing, and they want to get the seed that Della has put out on our, on our, be our back porch. But none of them has ever brought me any bread or, or anything meat-wise that I would say, well, thank you, Mr. Blue Jay, I really appreciate that. But, but God arranged it so Elijah would be fed by these <coughs> ravens. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. God's provision for him. And you know, Abraham said it well. When God sent the ram in the thicket, when he thought he was supposed to sacrifice his son, and when he was going to kill his son, his hand was in the air with a knife, and all of a sudden a noise in the distance, the ram. And he called God Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. You know, I think of my life and I think of all the ways that God provides. It's pretty amazing. He provides from areas that I have never, ever imagined. But God provides. He says, Jim, I know your needs. I know what you need. And I will not let you pull it out. Maybe this Thanksgiving, you're going to stand up later and you're going to say, you know, you won't believe this, but God provided for me in this way. And I want to give him public glory and honor. God's provision sometimes is amazing. Totally. I think of Peter and how God provided for him. He was in prison. God sent an angel. I was reading the passage this morning. He's tied between two soldiers. There are four squads of four guys each. Sixteen people watching over him. The angel comes through the gates, through the cell, taps him on the shoulder, and he didn't even do it in a sneaky way. It says that the cell lit up from the angels, the glory of God and the angel. Like, okay, maybe you don't need to light up the cell. I mean, that's like, that, that's, a, that's a deal breaker for me, I would think, to get him out of there. But no, somehow God had the power to make all those guys not see that. And the wake of Peter, and the chains fell off, and the door opened, and they went by 16 fully trained soldiers. And he says, before you get up, put on your clothes. And Peter's thinking, it's a vision. This can't be true. And God says, through the angel, come on, come on. And about a block from the prison, the angel leaves him. And he shows up at the house where they're praying. And of course, they didn't believe it either. And they said, the girl said, he's a ghost. And God provided and escape. This Thanksgiving, do you agree that we can be thankful for the most powerful God in the whole universe? Amen. Amen. That God can provide, He can provide financially, relationship-wise. God can provide when it seems like there is no hope. And these are the times that God says, let my people be thankful for God's provision. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall provide all you need according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. The fourth thing we see here, I think, is God's insight. God knew everything. God knows everything. He knows the number of hairs on our head. The Bible says he knows how long we'll live. Uh, God knows who we're going to meet before we actually meet them. He actually knows the thoughts in our mind before we think them. God's insight is amazing. And what does he do in verse 9? Let's read it. Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. And I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. He sends them to the care of a widow. Which is quite ironic. God has a sense of humor. Because he leaves nothing undone. He could have sent her to a very rich lady. Someone who had a lot of food and, you know, just was well off. But what does God do? He sends her, him, 
to a widow. Now this widow at the time, she's thinking, I'm just going to feed myself and my son, and we're going to die. So it seems impossible. But that's where God sends him. Because God knows everything. And not only does he know everything, but he can bring things out of nothing. Just to show his power. <coughs> and that's verses 14 to 16. We see God's power. She meets him. He meets her and says, hey, could you give me a drink of water? And she's a nice lady, so she said, sure. And then he says, as you're going, could you make me a little bit of bread? And that's what she says. You know what? As God lives, I only have a little bit left, and that little bit left is going to feed my son and myself one more time, and then we're going to die. So not a really good attitude, but realistic in her mind. And he says to her, the jar of flour that you have and the jug of oil will never, ever run out until the rain comes back. Now that, that's crazy. But that's the kind of God that we serve. And that's the kind of God who we can be thankful for this Thanksgiving because if he did it then, can he still do it now? Yeah, he can. And there are times in my life that I am so ashamed of my lack of faith. And I think, oh God, can you do it again? And the answer is yes. And for us today to be able to publicly declare our faith in God is saying, Lord, you can do these things. Because I believe. And God takes our belief and he uses it for good. How thankful are you? There are others who are thankful and do crazy things. New Delhi, a man who said he had been a drunk, a chain smoker, and a thief, chopped off his left hand as a thanksgiving offering to his guru he credits for curing him. Now at age 42, lay in tears for hours in front of a picture of his spiritual guru, Bam Bam Bama, then cut off his hand with a single stroke of a sickle. Now, I don't believe you have to do that. I would believe that God wants you to do that. But if this man is willing to give everything, what is public praise for us today to give in Thanksgiving? Can you see what I'm building up to? All right, number two, the widow, verses 7 to 24. There are five things I believe that she was thankful and could be thankful for too. Number one, that God knew her personally. Verse nine, go at once to bear in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow. Isn't that cool that God knew her? It's always cool when someone famous knows you. At uh, my last church, I actually had a BC lion, lineman coming to the church and I actually did his uh, child's dedication. And, and he knew me. He knew Jim, and I knew him, and it was really cool. And of course, for the dedication, Wally Wong came. Uh, in my last church, uh, there was a guy who went to school, high school with uh, Howie Mandel, and uh, so it was, you know, it was kind of cool. He could say, yeah, how are you doing? And he could say, Mike, do you do it's cool. But it's even cooler when God knows us, and God knew this widow. And this Thanksgiving, I think it's really cool that God knows each of you. That you are special to God. And that God has made you unbelievable. And I take the stand that today, I believe that God has created us all. He's created the world. And there is no such thing as evolution in the mind of the Christian. We're doing evolution and creation on Wednesday nights. And one of the quotes I had prepared for this last lesson was really cool. It says, John Templeton said, would it not be strange if the universe without purpose accidentally created humans who are so obsessed with purpose? You get that? It all happened by chance. But what happened was that human beings were created with a purpose or want to know what their purpose is. Totally different than what the teaching of evolution would be. And God has created us with purpose. Uh, Psalm 139. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
I knew full well my that I knew that full well my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. One thing to be thankful for, if nothing else, this Thanksgiving, is that you are known by God. And God has designed you individually, especially to be you, and that there is no one else but like you. Number two, God came at the right time. You've heard it saying before, God is never early, but always on time. In this case, God came at the right time. The Bible says at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Timing is very important for this widow, for she was running out of time. Maybe this Thanksgiving you could reflect back upon how you felt that time was running out and all of a sudden God sent help for you. Verse 12, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug, and I'm gathering a few sticks to take home to make and to mend for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Either she was a drama queen, or she realized that it could be the end of her life. I don't know if she was going to take her life or just waste away. But she was serious about this is the end. You may have felt recently about giving up. And yet God said to you, or sent someone your way, don't give up. The right time is coming. And God opens a door or he sends someone your way. That's something to be thankful for. Number three, God cared for her. The jar never runs out. God shows his power. Great care for the saints God has. God really cares for this widow and her son. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Maybe this Thanksgiving you are thankful for God who answers your prayers, or God who is there for you, and even though he hasn't answered the prayer that you would want, you don't think he's a God who's compassionate, and that he would never allow you to go through those things without him being with you. Nehemiah 9, 19 says, Because of your great compassion, you did not abandon them in the wilderness. By day, the pillar of cloud did not fail to, to guide them on their path, nor the, the pillar of fire by night to shine on them. In verse 17 of the same chapter, God, you are compassionate and slow to anger. David says, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow in anger, abounding in love. Exodus 33, 19, Moses said, God says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Are you thankful today for a compassionate God? There are times, and I'm sure in your walk, that you have gone astray. That you've done things you should not have done, and God could have just and just started over. But God forgave you because you came to him and you asked for forgiveness. For God didn't destroy you, and you're still on that path. And God is saying, come on back. I love you. This path will lead to destruction. But I, come back to me, and I'll put you on the path of health and of those things that are good for you. It's always nice to know that someone is there for us and cares. Fourth thing God provided miraculously, we've done through this before, but once again, can you fathom a jar of flour and a jar of oil that never run out for three and a half years? Wow. That's amazing. That, that's a it gives me goosebumps just thinking about the fact that God's power, every morning, every night, after you make the evening dinner, you go down and there'll be a little bit left or maybe nothing. And the next morning you wake up and the anticipation of going to see that jar of, of uh, flour and oil and boom, it's up again. It's like, whoa, I hit the jackpot. This is amazing. And God showed how miraculous he is. And there may have been miracles in your life. Maybe we've never heard of. Maybe today's the day that you're going to share a miracle with us. I'm really looking forward to our sharing time. Do not let me down. The last thing is here. No pressure. God shows his power. 21 to 23. So not only does he fill up the jar, both of them, every day, but something happens in 21 to 23. And that is... Actually, we'll start Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, 
What do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, have you brought tragedy even to this widow I am staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. And the Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. And Elijah picked him up and carried the child down from the room into the house. And he gave it to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. I think it's pretty amazing when God can bring life back to a, a body that is dead. God has showed his power in many ways, parting the Red Sea, knocking down the walls of Jericho, putting Jonah in the belly of a whale for three days. I mean, it's just crazy. And I think also what ranks up there is when God can return life to a body that is dead, cold, dead. And God, through this process, allows Elijah to allow his power to be used in this way. And three times he stretches out over this boy. And he pleads with God, God, please. Please, God. Please return the life of this boy to this body. And God answers his prayer. Maybe in the past, there have been those who you have loved, you have cared for, that God has answered your prayer. Now, I know not like that always does God do that. God has his reasons. Maybe this morning there's someone here who needs to hear about God's power that has happened in your life previously. So, do we have a video? Okay, let's, let's go right to the videos. Forget the sing. I love that video because it's so obvious. So, what we're going to do, we have a little contest today, and that is, during our thankful time, uh, whatever section gets the most uh, thankfulness, we're going to release you first for the pumpkin bake-off. <laughs> so we're, yeah, we're going to take the offering after we have our sharing time. No music. Yeah, the kids will stay. And kids can be involved. So kids, if you have something to be thankful for, it can be as easy as I have a bed to sleep in. Okay? So we're really going to run up the tally today. And we're going to make God so proud of our thankfulness that uh, even the hosts of heaven will be focusing on Cedarbrook today because we are a true church that is truly thankful. So if you're not thankful for it, don't throw it in. But if you are, it can be as simple as I had breakfast this morning. And we'll see what happens. All right, so I, I need talliers on each area. So can someone volunteer to count over here? Would you, Haley? Thank you very much, Haley. Can I have a, someone here in this section to tally? I cheat, so I better not. Okay, all right. Uh, Natsik, would you mind being the counter for this particular one, this section? Sure. Okay, you have to say that. And can I get someone over here? Someone to... Somebody? I know, I know you're a smaller team, but God can do th great things with small numbers. So that, and you can have multiple thanks, but you have to make sure that you let somebody else have a chance. All right, so you're ready? Um, I don't want to make it, you know, I want us to really come from the heart, but I think it's important. God says that he dwells in the praises of his people. So who'd be first? Which team? Okay, and... I'm for my family. Your family, that is totally cool. Okay, let's, let's mark that as one. Anybody else? Randy? I'm thankful for the Lord uh, bringing me to this church and to such a wonderful family. <coughs> Thank you. That's okay. Anybody else? Bob, what's the meaning? for my job and my employer. Are you over here? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, for job and employer, right? Okay. Yes, still draw breath, right on. Keep it coming, guys. This is good. We're starting out well. What are you thankful for? Don? I'm thankful that every moment of my life is God filtered. He, nothing happens in my life without him knowing. And uh, he's right in the situation, no matter what it is. Right on. 
Thank you. All right, someone else? We got at least 10 minutes. Melissa? I'm thankful that I have a healthy daughter. Yes, healthy daughter. Right on. Good. Someone else? And the counters can add to this too. So, Lori? Okay, Ray, we're going to hold you to the end, so we'll, Ray has something to say. <laughs> Anyone else before? Yeah, that was a nice way. Okay, two in the back, Bernie, and then. Thankful for Gail who led me to this church by her example. Gail Winchester. Okay, good. And? Thank you for education. For education, right on. Okay. Yes, sir? Freedom from addiction. Freedom from addiction, right on. Praise right the Lord. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Somebody here? Jen? having this thankfulness time. Because <laughs> I feel so encouraged. <laughs> yes, isn't it you know? encouraging? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> thank you for encouraging us all to count it and get up and all through the whole sermon. It's kind of sneaky, but yeah, okay. <laughs> sure. um, this morning, the Lord reminded me when I was in the shower that, um, that he healed my neck. Amen. He healed my neck in about uh, 20 years ago, or I don't know, 15 years ago, or something like that. And for many, many years, my neck was um, osteoarthritis, and it was—it felt like gravel all the time, and broken glass, and it was hot all the time, and it was 
I don't. I think I fell on my head when I was 10 years old or something, and I must have done something to my neck, and I didn't really know, and I didn't tell anybody because I was only 10. And so um, it got worse and worse and worse and worse, and I didn't really notice it getting that bad, to be honest. Like you just sort of decide you're going to live with it. What else are you going to do, right? So there were times when I have to sit straight all the time. I couldn't like watch a movie like that because it hurt so much. And it was hot and it was just, it was down my shoulder and my arm and my back. And it was really, really bad. And so uh, one time we were having an alpha group and they, that particular alpha group had a, uh, a healing evening as part of the alpha group. And so I was, you know, days were coming up to this healing evening and the Lord told me he's gonna heal my neck. And I went, oh yeah. And I believed him. I knew, I knew he was going to heal my neck. And so, um, yeah, I was just thanking him during the days up to it. And then we got to this healing meeting. And um, there was uh, one fellow like Jim who, who had the gift of healing and he was leading it. And anyway, I'll try to keep it short here. But anyway, um, he said, we're going to pray. And we're going to pray for the Lord to tell us what, what he wants to heal. So all through the evening, what would happen was we'd be praying and we'd say, you know, we'd speak up and say, I got a really sore elbow all of a sudden. I never had a sore elbow before. And then we would all, and then we, he would say, who's got a sore elbow? And the person would come up and we would pray and God would heal. And so um, this was happening all through the evening and I knew he was going to heal my neck. Like I had no doubt in my mind at all. And so... <laughs> Um, we're carrying on and everybody's praying. It was just, you know, everybody's praising the Lord for his healing. It was really a really great experience. And so then somebody said, I have a sore neck. <laughs> so, I, so I was going to get up and this older lady in front of me, she just passed away the other day. She was 96 years old. So she must have been about 80. And so she stood up. Of course, when you're 80, you have a sore neck, right? <laughs> and so... <laughs> So I was going to get up and I thought, okay, no, it's okay, you know, she's got a sore neck. So then he said, is there anyone else that has a sore neck? And so I stood up and we both went up. Well, I tell you, um, they all prayed and the heat just started. It started my neck, went down my shoulders, my arms, my back, my whole body. And, and we, later on we were in circle, we were holding on and the heat was coming out of my fingers. And the Lord, all, everybody felt it. The people were standing near me and said, I can't believe it. I said, yeah, believe it. <laughs> and so I, all of a sudden, right then, he healed my neck. Amen. And it was like rubber after that. You know what I mean? It wasn't like glass. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like, uh, you know, broken gravel. It wasn't hot anymore. Well, yes, it was. It was hot with a different heat. But I sat there for, I don't know how long, just basking in his healing and his love. And um, all this heat kept going for a long, long time. Amen. And so then later I stood up and I said, you know, I want you guys to know God healed my neck. He Amen. healed it. It's not, it's not hurting anymore. It's not gravelly anymore. And so anyway, that's a kind of testimony that, you know, he wants me to share it. Amen. It's his power. It's his love, you yes. know. And he can heal each of you. Whether it's your heart, your your body. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Let's give the Lord a hand. Yeah. All right, let's uh, just take a tally. How many do we have on this side, Haley? How many do we have? Eight. Eight. How many do we have there? Eleven. Eleven. Okay, and possibly twelve. And uh, yeah, how many over here? Seven. Seven. Okay, we're going to go for about two more minutes. Bob, you're first. All right, we're going to go. Super. Okay. All right. Josh. Uh, I'm just continually thankful for the um, the growing support I've gotten from this congregation um, throughout my recovery. Um, many of you, and particularly this year, Andy and um, Carla and Mike, who um, barely know me just from seeing me here and having my brother as a member of the congregation and help me move as I make the transition to Wagner Hills, where I would praise the Lord. Um, mm -hmm gain strength in my sobriety, just having people who are helping me for being a member of the body of Christ. I'm really grateful for the body of Christ, particularly here, for your guys' help. Thank you, brother. That support is very encouraging. Your special to us, too. Thank you. Okay. Someone else? Have done? I'm thankful uh, that God saved me. Okay. Many years ago, I guess I was about 30, and that moment, I know, that I was saved, and he just turned, God turned my life around, mm -hmm. just right around, and uh, it just, I did, I've never stopped going in his direction, and I thank you mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. doing 
Right on. It is a gift. Okay, one minute left. Randy? Thankful for the Lord uh, sending me to uh, Ray and Wanda to uh, uh, have them take me under their, their wing and, and uh, help me get uh, back to a better grounding uh, in my walk. Yeah. I'm very thankful for that. Relationships are very important. Very important. Yes, Heidi. God's grace. Yep. Right on. Okay. Answer. Right on. Super. Okay. Anyone else? Before I close the door, let the right cake touch. Yeah, praise the praise Lord for them. Right on. Wendy, did you have that? Anyone else before I give it over to Ray? Oh, Jenna? <laughs> Okay, Ray, come on up. You got 30 seconds. Ah! Take me that long to get there. <laughs> I'm going to start speaking now. The way. So as Ray's coming, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll t show one last video at the end, and we're going to take the offering during that. So maybe we can prepare the offering folks for that. Uh, so do we have people take offering this morning? I know a lot of people are gone. Are we good? Okay, good. So Ray, come on up. <coughs> Not yet. Yeah. I'll give you 35 seconds. Oh, it takes longer than that. Uh, when I got the email uh, from the church here, uh, who would like to give, have something to give thanks for, uh, originally I thought, yeah, I'm really thankful that God has given me a mission field down at Mill Lake. But then when Pastor preached on this, uh, First King 17, it reminded me of a number of years ago, about 40, 45 years ago, when my wife had just gotten married and we adopted our children and we had to have a house or they wouldn't let, uh, our own house, or they wouldn't let us adopt. So we, we bought a house that was full basement and an upstairs, an oil furnace, no insulation in the house at all. Uh, we had a real problem uh, trying to get, uh, have money to, to buy oil. And we were running into debt. And the oil company sent us a letter, no more oil until this bay bill is paid. And I thought, well, through the summer, I might be able to catch up. But no, I couldn't. It was September. Uh, we had a 250 gallon, that's about 1,500 liters of, uh, for a tank in the basement. And it would drink 300 gallons a, a month during the win winter. And we we're into September, the tank was right on the empty mark. So I, I took my Bible down into the basement and I never told anybody about this until it was all over. But I, I read this chapter and I said to God, I said, when, uh, he said, uh, but first bring me a little loaf of bread. And I said, you know, that first 
Lord belongs to God. That, that's my tithe. And Lord, I've been faithful at tithing. And I, I, I read through and I prayed. I laid my hands on the oil barrel and I, I prayed, Lord, keep the oil coming. My furnace went September, October, November, December, January, February, and March without being filled. God just kept pouring it in and it was still on. On the empty mark. Amen. pump running dry and I oh God is this the end of my faith but it turned out to be quite a warm day in March that night I turned the electric stove on with the oven open to just to keep the chill off the house but the next day someone came to my house and gave me a 